Michaela, thanks for being here. How's your day been? What's going on in your world? You doing okay? Yes, the t today's been good. There was a couple book launch, book launch uh, uh -huh. interviews, things like that. I actually, one thing that was interesting was being interviewed by Tiger Beat, which my parents right. were like, oh, that was like the hype. That's where I got all my news about teen celebrities and everything. But they're still around. I did a, an interview with them today and a couple other things about the book. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, I'm glad to have you here, and we're going to touch on the book. We're going to talk about Dwen. Uh, but first, Michaela, for those who don't know, can you give us a little intro into who you are? I know you're obviously a young lady. You have a company. I know you have an amazing family that powers you and helps you do so much. Just unpack a bit for us okay. who you are. Clearly, you have okay. a lemonade company. That's obvious. Uh, but share with us a little bit your story and how that began. And I'm sure you said this a million times today, 10 million times this year. But thank <laughs> you for taking the time and sharing that with us. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me. So my name is Michaela Ulmer. I'm 15 years old and from Austin, Texas. And Ooh. so I'm a student, a bee ambassador, a, the founder and CEO of Me and the Bees Lemonade and an author. And so my story about all of this started when I was four and a half years old and I got sung by two bees one week. And I also got a cookbook for my great granny, Helen. And so just it, it was like this one summer that after I signed up in a business fair, and these two things happened. I was terrified of the bees. My parents encouraged me to do a little bit of research. And doing that research, I learned that bees are really important. And without them, we can't have a lot of the food that we eat every day. And so I was like, okay, let me, whatever I do for this business fair that I signed up for, I want to help save the bees. And so I ended up taking my great granny Helen's recipe and um, sweetening it with honey, which I just learned that bees made or honeybees made. And I decided this is gonna be what I'm gonna sell for the fair. And it did really well. I dressed up in a bee suit. I donated a portion of what I made to organizations in Austin that were helping the bees. Nice. And I got a lot of good feedback and decided to just keep on doing it. So it was me selling out of my stand in front of my house or in front of local restaurants and stores just a couple times a year, learning about the bees and teaching about them as well. I love it. Michaela, what's the uh, what's the importance of family to you? I know family is a big part of what you do and I want to acknowledge them. Why are they important to you? How are they important to you? Uh, family, especially being in school, you know, yes. and all the things you're doing. Uh, let's give them some acknowledgement as well. Um, I mean, my family has been so critical in one, supporting me. So not only when I got sung and said I want to start the Lemonade Stand in the first place, but also as I grew. So me saying I want to get my product into bottles. When a local pizza store said, hey, if you can find a way to bottle your product, we'd like to carry it in our store. Mm -hmm. So of course, I'm starting to ask my parents and my family, how can I do this? None of them had beverage experience in like the beverage industry. My mom was marketing, dad was finance and ops, but they both said, okay, how are we going to do this? And mm -hmm. kind of, we just walked through the steps together of asking other entrepreneurs and um, even store managers what makes a good bottle of product. But since then, it's been like my dad helping me with Shark Tank, my mom teaching me that, like, don't be nervous when you're doing workshops about the bees, even if kids are older than you, like everyone has something to teach and everyone has something to learn. And now as I'm going back into school and um, like the business still needs to be run, I have an amazing family that helps me run that and a team or a hive. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. And, and again, uh, Michaela, when you talk about Shark Tank, you have to say that slowly. You can't gloss over it. I used to work at the UN and I would say, well, I work at the UN and move on. And my sister was like, my brother works at the UN. You have to say that slowly. You got to just. You know, I up, I've been on Shark Tank. I landed <laughs> with Dame and John. There we go. Um, so a few things I want to touch on, and I want to talk about uh, Dwen. I know it's a very important part of what you do, uh, the Dell Women's Entrepreneur Network. I want to touch on that and encourage people to check out Dwen as well, and also touch on your book and Dell. Before we do that, a little bit about scale, Michaela. When you think about uh, your company uh, from being a very, very small business, maybe when you first started, to what it is today, I ordered some things, my team, and I got a box in the mail of these teas. Uh, any tips, uh, recollection from your journey for those who are just starting out, Michaela, just starting out, they want to grow as well. Maybe they're not going to be on Shark Tank. They're not going to have a book. But what mm -hmm. are two or three things that you've done and it can help people know, you know what, if you want to make whatever you're making and want to grow it, what have you done? What are some lessons learned or mistakes made even? Help us understand that. Well, first, I'd like to say there were some really good pieces of advice from the previous speaker. So thank you for that. And then. Uh, some things that I've learned, one is 
like if you want to start a business, I think the most successful ones are businesses that fix problems or like solve needs. So even if you don't have a business idea yet, try to see and try different things, see life from other people's perspectives to see what problems they have and whether you can create a product or service to help solve that. Um, the next thing I learned, and if there's any like young people who are watching this, I would say take advantage of us being born into technology, like mm -hmm. whether it's marketing or graphic design, um, even like free invoice templates and things like that. We really know how to work our way around those and how to find them. So I take advantage of that too. And start a company with a cause or a mission because social entrepreneurship, I think is going to be the future. There's my generation is looking at whether there are whether the products that they're about to get does good in the world, they're looking at labels, they're looking on on websites and comparing it. So I would say if you're starting a company, make sure to include some sort of social aspect, not only because of the increase in conscious consumerism, but also because it's something really big that uh, like can motivate you and when you face adver adversities or challenges. Yeah, and I think what you said, two things I want to highlight. One is uh, a it should have a cause to it and start a company that problems that solves a problem. It sounds obvious, maybe Michaela, but I know I'm sure you have come across. I know of many people or can imagine them. They start something because of their own selfish interest. It's not bad, but it's like I just want to do it. That's not good enough. If the market doesn't want what you're offering, if the market wasn't isn't going to buy it, or if you don't have the the tenacity to educate them that they need it, I don't see how the company can go because people are going to buy. I need nourishment or a beverage. I need mm -hmm. to start a game mm -hmm. company, but there have to be some reason, some problem that they're having for you to have a business. Is that about right? Yes, I agree totally. Yeah. And then the second thing, Michaela, is the aspect of cause. Why do you think that's so important? Why can't I start, you know, I don't know, a pen company that just sells pens? Why do you think it's important to start a pen company that maybe say, that that donates money or helps others or in your case, bees? Why is that important for you? And why do you think people care about it? Um, so at least in my experience with me and the bees, I found that there's a lot more people who are eager to join the mission, who are eager to believe, like who believe in your product and who will support your company. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot easier to gain a lot. It's a lot easier to gain um, awareness about the yeah. brand. And to get people and attached to you. Interest. Excuse me? Uh, to get people attached to you, I was saying, I was just helping you out there. I was saying to get people, if, if you're just selling something, lemonade, pens, whatever it is, that's one half. But I guess it's a lot easier. Also, people say, wow. I want to be a part of that or I want to feel good. I want to join your mission, probably. Yeah. And and also it's something that you have in common. It's like, hey, I realize this is a problem too. I'm glad that that's something we 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 have in common and I'm gonna help you solve that too. It's yeah. like you get you get a great product, but you also realize and you know that you're doing something good. Yeah, no, that's for sure as well. Listen, Dell has been a great partner uh, for me, Michaela. In fact, we're giving away three Dell XPS computers to people. So uh, we gave one away already to somebody. Uh, so we're giving away a few more. Uh, oh, Michaela, what's the partnership with Dell been like to you? Many people think of Dell as just, quote unquote, they sell computers. But I know and you know Dell does so much more. Talk about that relationship, why it's so important that you've partnered with Dell uh, uh, in your business and Dell has partnered with you. It's a two-way relationship. Talk about why that's important to you uh, to partner with Dell. I mean, so one thing that's interesting is that my company started in Austin. Dell also started in Austin. That's true. And that's just something we have in common in the very beginning. But since growing, Dell has helped with distribution. So Dell is huge in Austin. My lemonade is actually sold in their cafeterias. Nice. And along with 15 other stores, but just being able to go and demo in Dell cafeterias mm -hmm. and meet and just see how excited they are about the project is pretty cool. The second thing is resources. So this was amazing. But when we first moved into our office, when we first moved into our office, it was kind of plain, a little drab. I have a chapter about like how, <laughs> I'm wondering, how are we going to make this into a fun me and the bees themed office? But Dell actually volunteered secretly with my parents to yeah like come and supply the office with technology. And so they surprised me when I came from school wow. on lunch with like a printer and um, desktops and all in one computers. Like a makeover. The... Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then also uh, awareness because Dell has always been quick to share my story and my mission. 
That is nice. That is awesome. And I know for sure I can say that Dell definitely is a company that cares, that promotes and supports entrepreneurship. And Michaela, your, your book, uh, Be Fearless, is out. I think it came out yesterday, I want to say, or today. Uh, the 18th. So you're really close. It was, uh, two, yeah, it's two, still seven. launching. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. What's in, why'd you write the book? What's inside of it when we buy it? And I encourage everyone to go to Amazon uh, or wherever you want them to go, Michaela. Be be fearless uh, by Michaela. Yeah. Uber. What's inside of it? Unpack a little bit of that for us. What will we find when we go there? Okay. So I have it right here. Awesome. It's, oh, you have it on the screen. Perfect. So my book is called Be Fearless, Dream Like a Kid. Okay. And it's part memoir of, of starting and growing my company and lessons that I've learned along the way. And then also part business guide, especially for young adults or middle schoolers who are interested in entrepreneurship. And so one thing that I love is that with each chapter, like coming up with my business idea or wanting to upgrade from a handheld lemon squeezer into an electric one <laughs> or pitching on Shark Tank or like going into my first store, I talk through each activity that teaches kids how to do that as well. So here's an activity called FITS to help you come up with a business idea based on your interests or hobbies. Mm -hmm. Here's something, here's a, like the five steps to creating a budget, um, estimate your income and list your expenses and things like that. So I realized there's not, there's not a lot of books that are for youth or that youth can read about entrepreneurship that's also written by a teen entrepreneur. Right. And so, that's kind of the need that this book solves. And also my story and different anecdotes from growing my company. I love it. That is powerful. I love it. I love it. So listen, everybody, is, is Amazon mm -hmm. the best place to go, Michaela? Is there another uh, place that you recommend people go? Is that is Amazon good? So so I it's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, but also at local bookstores. So if you want, I really recommend like supporting local bookstop bookshops or bookstores. And you can go to IndieBound and type in your zip code and it'll type in which uh, bookstores near you have the book. And also it's as an audiobook. So I actually went to the studio and recorded this book as an audiobook and it's nice. available on Audible and Libro for those who like listen to audiobooks while doing dishes or driving and things like that. My wife is an audio person for sure. She listens to the Bible and other things on audio as well. Um, mm -hmm. Dwen, I know is important, Michaela. You and I, I don't think we first met. We probably we met, I think, at Austin at, a, at a South by Southwest, I think. But we were together sure. in Singapore at the Dell Women Entrepreneur Network, Dwen, and I encourage people to check it out, Dell Women Entrepreneur Network uh, event. Uh, Dwen is a uh, amazing community of uh, small business owners who are female founders. Uh, you're a female yeah. founder, Kayla. Tell us, unpack that a bit, Dwen, why it's important, uh, why it's important to you, what people can find in that community. I've been there, at a resource and events and discussion boards and all kind of things, but tell us about that a bit, uh, why it's important. Sure. So I've been going to Dwin since 2016. I was first invited to their South Africa location nice. to attend Dwin, speak at uh, Girls Track, which is a section for girls, and also just network with other female entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs or just really amazing and inspiring people. Mm -hmm. And so it was an amazing experience because I've met connections who I still am in touch with today, even as I'm like talking about this book and growing the company. And then I learned some pretty cool lessons. Like I learned tips about pitching and public speaking that I didn't know about. I learned about uh, branding that I hadn't seen or knew before. So I think that's cool. And so it's a way, it's a whole community and network of like-minded female entrepreneurs to talk about growing their business and collaborations and projects. And then also the impact of technology in that. I love it. And Michaela, you have a growing fan base in the Smart Hustle community. Just so you know, people love Michaela and love uh, her story as well. Uh, <laughs> any you. advice, Michaela, talking to young people who are young, they, they see Shark Tank, they read Forbes and Fortune, MSNBC and CNBC, and all these things are hearing your story, Michaela. Any advice to them? Things that maybe you've learned along the way. Uh, you're, you're still young, but you started your business when you were younger. So what's advice that you would say, you know what? If I could go back, maybe I'd do it different. Or maybe you wouldn't. But what's your advice to young people who have dreams? They haven't yet started, but they want to start their own business and they're a bit young. What are some things they should note? Um, well, I, I think I answered a little bit of like some sure. lessons that I learned or mm -hmm. encouraged. But I would say if you have big dreams, if you want to become a change maker, then I wouldn't at any cost like put it off because mm -hmm. you're young. I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> like, like don't. 
don't say, oh, I, I'm too young, because you can still learn. You can still learn no matter how young you are. I think curiosity is something that comes naturally to us and especially to um, kids. So don't wait it to make a difference just because you're young. And then I'd also like to kind of flip that question, uh, Mr. Roman, and, and me, say what advice I would have to adults who are who have dreams and who want to ask I was going to ask that next. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> And so for that, I, I would say dream like a kid. I, I think mm -hmm. that if we all like dream like a kid when it comes to business, and by that I mean thinking of like the obstacle, the opportunities and the really big goals and dreams that you have instead of just the obstacles that will get in the way, I think mm -hmm. a lot more people will put their dreams into action. And I think the world would be in a much better place. So kind of embracing that kid mentality when it comes to starting and growing your company. Yeah, no, I think that's so important. I think so many times adults, and again, adults, there's pros and cons to all this, but I think you're right. So many adults, I think we've lost the spark maybe, lost the vision, lost the innocence. I'm not sure what it is, you know, where things hold us back, right? Like, no, mm -hmm. I can't do it. I'm 30, I'm too old. I'm 40, I'm too old. And I think as a kid, the, the benefit of that, it, there's the side that's, that's the immaturity part of it, of course, but the benefit of that is you don't know what you don't know. Nobody told you you couldn't go to the moon. Nobody told Michaela she couldn't make a lemonade company. So yeah. I think my point is, I think that's powerful. And I know going back to Dwen, I think that's one thing that's so important. Again, Dell Women Entrepreneur Network, people should definitely have a look at Dell Dwen, Dwen, is that there's a community of people who can inspire you. I know when I was there in Singapore, and I can't wait till we all meet again in person at some point, uh, Michaela. Yeah. But there it was inspiring. It was amazing to be your one room with rock stars. I've done this. I've done that. Created this. How can I help you? How can we work together? So that was my biggest thing of um, of uh, community. And I think that that's yes. the adults. Please. That's a really good point is how eager everyone is to, I don't know, teach what they know. Even if it's little nuggets of knowledge, they're always so eager to teach what they know, which I think is amazing. Yeah, that's for true. And I think that um, teaching is important as well. I'm curious, Michaela, um, the advice you've been given over the years, any, any pro, not pros or cons, but any thoughts like when you're thinking as you're growing, as you're building your business, I'm sure everybody wants to give you advice. Everyone, everybody wants to speak to you. Um, besides your parents, of course, any filter that you're learning that, you know what, this is advice that maybe I shouldn't receive, or this is advice that I should listen to, or, you know, this person, I think I want to listen to them and, and get a bit more. This person, though, maybe Maybe I want to keep my distance a bit. Have you come across that or, or have gone through that or had to go through that journey? Um, not really. I think Good. I, I, for me, a lot of the times, even if people tell me lessons, I'm like, okay, I'm going to put that, I'm going to remember it. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I have to learn those lessons on my own. <laughs> so I'm like, thank you. And I'm going to try to implement that. Sometimes it doesn't work right away until I either learn it the hard way or have to learn it on my own. But I really, I do listen. I listen to advice because I think there, there does need to be a balance of people who like, you'd be really eager to listen to. And then people who are like, eh, I don't know if I should listen to advice from them. But I don't know. I listen to it. And then it depends on, I, I kind of just figure out what I want to actually put into action. Yeah, no, that's that's important. But I think listening, you're right. I think there's a lot of different. I know for me, Michaela, um, I look at the longevity and their track record because there's a lot of people who want to say this, say that. So, but I think it's all good. And I think your attitude is right. I heard it from somebody. They said, let me assume that I could be wrong. Not that I am, but let me take that attitude that if somebody's telling me something like somebody says, Ramon, there's ketchup on your shirt. Ooh, there's a stain on my shirt. Well, I don't know how I got this. Maybe I got it from the box. But somebody says, hey, Ramon, there's ketchup on your shirt. Instead of me being arrogant and saying no, let me pause. Huh, maybe they're right. And then you look down and realize mm -hmm. there's oh, ketchup you. instead of rejecting it immediately. So I think that's the biggest thing I'm learning. Any questions from Michaela? We're going to wrap up in about a minute or two or three. But any questions you have from Michaela, please let us know. And again, two things I want you to uh, keep in mind. One, Michaela's book is out. And I definitely suggest you check that out for sure. Uh, Michaela, hold that book up again for us, please, if you have it nearby. Good. Be fearless. Check out I want to show. I want to show a business lesson. Okay. Okay. So... Okay, so I have these little business lessons or business ideas throughout the book, and they're kind of like post-it notes just to, to let you know, hey, this is an important part of the book. But like this one says, you have to believe in your product, even though it might change, evolve, and improve over time. So that one's like, if you really want to sell a product, you have to believe in that product too. And there's just other parts where, where if I learned that in the book or along my story, I'm like, hey, flag this, here's a little business idea postcard and it's 
kind of like if you're flipping through the book or as you're growing your company and you need some advice, you know where to look for it. I think that is smart advice. And I like how you did that. I think people like people like a, a tweetable thing, Majiggy. So I think in your book is that. Mm -hmm. So definitely check out Michaela's book. And remember, number two, definitely check out Dell Technologies. You're looking for solutions for your business. My whole office, Michaela, is full of Dell stuff. Notebooks, the monitor, the works. So definitely that's point two. And I think third, really, the biggest gift we can give to people, Michaela, is to win. I think female founders, if you're a male and you want to be a champion, definitely check out the Dell Women's Entrepreneur Network. I'm a champion. Michaela's a member. And I think that's a place, I know that's a place where you'll find people who are of a like-minded attitude and spirit who can help, who you can help, which I think is important, Michaela, and who can help you. So I think both are important. Sometimes we only look for what can I get from it, but I also find, Michaela, when you have an attitude of how can I give, you benefit as well. Yeah. yeah. Michaela, and any final words? Thank you. Sorry, exactly. go ahead. No, I was going to say, any final words you wanted? There's a delay, so I know it's hard. It's not like you're talking in person. There's a slight delay. And I can't know. Hear uh, any final words um, you want to leave us with, Michaela? I've been so honored to have you here. Your lemonade is good. Your book is out. You. I'm so glad that Dell brought you here and Dwen. But any one or two words you want to leave us with uh, before we uh, move on with our amazing uh, discussion here at the Survive and Thrive Summit? Um, well, first, I'd like to say thank you for all the comments. They're really nice, and I love looking at them, and also the ones that are popping up. But thank you so much. And then my someone said, can you repeat that? It was a long name. Was that the business? The business is Me and the Bees, yep. and it's available at like Whole Foods and HEB and Natural Grocers. And then the event is Dwen Dell Woman Entrepreneur Network. That's right. And somebody's asking Michaela, they're like, when does her speaking tour start? So mm. <laughs> they're giving me kudos as well. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure. I think right now it's focusing on the virtual book signing events yeah. and things like that because of COVID. But I am just thinking of what workshops and events I'm going to do after the pandemic subsides and after there's no risk of that. I love it. Listen, Michaela, thank you for your time today. So grateful you're here. All the best to the <laughs> Dell family. Thank you and give my greetings to your family. So, so glad you're here. And yes, we will post, Annette, about Dell's program. Michaela, thank awesome. you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching and thank you for asking. Indeed.